Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Faith Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Peter Kurtz. Special welcome to guests and visitors who are joining us through social media. I'd like to call your attention to the front of our bulletin. There are a lot of different announcements there, especially about different programs and ministries that are starting up. For those of you who are watching, um, those will all be posted on our, faith, our website later by the end of the day so that you'll be tuned in to all the activities and events that are happening here at Faith Lutheran. We will be uh, celebrating the Sacrament of Holy Communion today. All persons who are baptized and believe are welcome to come forward to receive the wafer of bread and to be able to dip or entink in the chalice of wine to receive both the bread and wine that becomes for us the very body and blood of Christ in our lives. Um, we are a caring body of Christian believers, learning and growing in faith, striving for peace, and witnessing to the love of Christ to serve the church, our community, and the world. I know, Peggy, you have some announcements? I do. Thanks. So does Lois, if you want to come up, Lois. Um, I just have to say that today is 9-11, and some of us were in New York when this happened. But I, um, I lost a brother. And, um, and I know many people are lost, so I ask us just never to forget. Thank you. Our work day today will um, be canceled due to weather, <laughs> so uh, we will reschedule at some time in the future. I want to wish a happy birthday to Shirley and Phil, so, um, and Jackie, and who else? <laughs> oh my goodness. So happy birthday to you all. Our congregational meeting is next Sunday. Please come. We need your vote, and we need you to, um, no, it's the, it's the 18th. Am I right? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> it's, been, it's been a little tough this morning watching those memorials, so please forgive me. Um, and today I also will be going over to St. Paul's. Uh, Bishop DeForest is here in the Northeast District. I just will wish him hello I'm not, and just remind him that we're here and we need a call. Um, and um, so other than that, I have no more. Lois, please. This is the season of thankfulness and um, so I changed the bulletin board out front and I'd like you each to take a, a leaf and as we say in school, cut and color, okay? <laughs> and, then, and then think of something that you're thankful for or even a blessing for the season um, and uh, bring it back and we'll share it on the bulletin board. Uh, there's going to be a brief meeting of Lutheran ladies about the Apple Fest after the service. We really have things under control, but I just want to touch bases with, with everyone. And, um, and we have Brenda's here, but I'm going to speak in her behalf. We have a, a, a show next week, but it's at 3 o'clock. It's uh, Stephen Perillo and his um, group, Christian group. So um, that's the last of our uh, concert series, and I, it's been, in my opinion, very successful. So hope to see you out. All right, thank you. One other announcement? Judy, sure. I think so.
Boomwhacker starts on Wednesday, right? And Sunday school lessons or Wednesday school lessons or whatever start then. We have a group coming. Um, also on next Saturday night at uh, Blakesley Church, uh, we have Joe and Sue Martin, who are the composers. Well, he is the composer of the cantatas that we do at Blakesley Choir. So he will be there actually for a workshop um, Saturday afternoon and Saturday evening is a free concert. There'll probably be a free will offering. But I invite you all to come. It's at 7.30. Um, he's an amazing as ours pianist. Um, he has the smallest hands you've ever seen and he just go covers that keyboard. So if you have time, uh, and before our concert on Sunday, please come there, 7.30 at Blakesley. So, thank you. Any other announcements? Yes, go ahead, Barbara. Today, the Lowest asked me uh, that we were in need of restaurant Mondays. Would we please come to the Today, um, res uh, we're talking about restaurant rendezvous. We did that in the past. We stopped it for a while because I was supposed to be moving, but I'm not moving. <laughs> so we're going to start it up probably October. So if you're interested, I'm going to put a paper out next Sunday to see how many people would like to do restaurant rendezvous. All right, many things are percolating and happening um, besides the leaves starting to fall. So that's uh, <laughs> so all, is that time of the year. Any other announcements? If not, you may stand as you are able and we continue with an uh, order for confession and forgiveness that's found in our bulletin. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who is eager to forgive and who loves us beyond our days. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, together let us acknowledge our failure to love this world as Jesus does. God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that sin lies hold of us. We have harmed your good creation. We have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Beloved of God, your sins are forgiven, and you are made whole. God points the way to new life in Christ, who meets us on the road. Journey now in God's abiding love through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our first hymn is in our green Lutheran book of worship, Come Thou Found of Every Blessing, number 499. <laughs>
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. You lead back to yourself all those who go astray. Preserve your people in your loving care, that we may reject whatever is contrary to you, and may follow all things that sustain our life in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated as we hear today's lessons. The first lesson is taken from the 32nd chapter of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, go down at once. Your people whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt have acted perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the way that I commanded them. They have cast through themselves an image of a calf and have worshiped it and sacrificed to it and said, these are your gods, O Israel. You brought you out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, how stiff-necked they are. Now let me alone, so that my wrath may burn hot against them, and I may consume them, and of you I will make a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord his God and said, O Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say, it was, with, it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth. Turn from your fierce wrath, change your mind, and do not bring disaster to your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them that by your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven 
and all this land that I have promised I will give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord changed his mind about the disaster that he planned to bring on his people. The word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We we'll read Psalm 51 responsibly. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. In your great compassion blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my offenses, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. So you are justified when you speak and right in your judgment. Indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness, a sinner from my mother's womb. Indeed, you delight in the truth deep within me, and I have no wisdom deep within. Me, within, me, deep within. Remove my sins with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be purer than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may be rejoiced. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my wickedness. Create in me a clean heart, of God, and renew a right spirit within me. Our second lesson is taken from the first chapter of 1 Timothy. I am grateful to Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has strengthened me, because he judged me faithful and pointed me to his service, even though I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and a man of violence. But I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief, and the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But for the very reason I received mercy, so that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display the utmost patience, making me an example to those who would come to believe in him for eternal life. To the king of the ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. gospel for this day is written in the 15th chapter of the gospel according to Luke, beginning with the first verse. Glory to you, o Lord. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus, and the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors and saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me! 
for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. The gospel for this day ends there. Praise to you, Christ. You may be seated. Good morning. I actually had a children's sermon prepared for today, too, just in case, because I heard there were children here last week when I wasn't here, right? So let's hope they come back and on next week. I have all my stuff down next week, so we'll do that one again. Um, this week I want to talk a little bit about Paul and his letter to Timothy. Um, Paul, as you know, was not a Christian. He actually stoned Stephen. And he was called by Christ to become a Christian. And he wrote this letter to Timothy to tell him that there is always redemption for us, that always we should listen to God. How many of us have had things in our lives where we wish we could do over again? Oftentimes, um, when I play the piano, I wish I could do it over again. <laughs> um, also, we say things to people that we really don't mean, maybe it just comes out quickly, and we're very sorry afterward. But you're like, why can't I do that over again? Why can't I just do something a little bit better? And Paul's whole message today is that we can, and that God gives us this chance, and Jesus gives us this chance to become better people, to learn from our mistakes, and he always forgives us. That's the amazing thing. We ask for his forgiveness, we try harder the next time, and indeed, our lives will always be second tries or third tries. But that's the beauty of it all. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, here is thanking thee this morning for Jesus, for Paul and his ministry, for his conversion, and telling Timothy and so many, many others all about Christ's love and converting them into Christianity. In God's name we pray, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Judy. I've been getting to the big project at my house that I have put off for years and years and years, which is going through every closet, cupboard, cellar, garage, and trying to clean out the stuff that's in there. For we lived in our house for over 20 years, and not having moved in that time, things can certainly accumulate. What I found, and I remembered uh, when I, that I put it there only once I found it, are loads of electronics. I found a 30-year-old tube Zenith television. <laughs> now, I knew I put it there, but who needs a tube television these days? Certainly one that doesn't work. But what do I do with it? Put it out of sight, out of mind. My first wa uh, um, tel a thin screen television, digital television, lasted a long time. It went out, failed, put that someplace else. But there are other things that are not as large or as central in our life that I just packed away and the storage area, basements, all other places. I found about four fans that broke over the years. None of them work, but what else do you do with a large fan? Stack it someplace. I found a, a 30-year-old blender. Doesn't work. <laughs> Taking up a lot of some space. I also found a uh, a gift that we were given, uh, that was probably about 25 years ago, it was one of those electric bread makers. It was the f I was fascinated with it when I got it and used it almost every month, but it lost its joy and uniqueness, packed that away, found it again. Stuff that I don't need, doesn't work, taking up space. 
So what motivated me a few weeks ago was in the township where I lived, made an announcement and posted it on their website that they were having a one day electronics recycling for township residents only. And I thought, ah, here's a place that I could easily get rid of all this stuff. Now I was thinking it was going to be down the street because we live near the township maintenance building. But on the flyer and on their website, it says, we're going to be collecting this at our new location, outside of town, in a rural part near the Luzerne County Fairgrounds, even past that way, if any of you know where that is. So I kept that flyer, and I was thinking, boy, as we get closer to that date, I'm going to get all those things. I don't have a truck. But I thought, I think I can get what we have in my Volkswagen. So, the week before, I went to all those places I saw those electronics and gathered them together in my garage in one place. The morning of that recycling, I backed my car there, opened up all the doors and trunk, and started carefully loading all those things. It was a challenge in spatial relationships, you know? You know, a 21-inch Zenith tube television. Let's see, how can I get that? It fit. It took up a lot of space, but I thought, let me get that in first and start packing other things around there. To my joy and surprise, after about an hour, I got everything I needed and wanted to take to that recycling in my car. So I w waited for the time that it was opened and thought, well, let me find where this place is. I had the address written down from the website uh, and the flyer. And I knew that road. I've been on that road a couple times. I've been to the Luzerne County Fair. I know that road. But I don't know where the new uh, Kingston Township Municipal Building was. But I thought, that's no problem. They gave an address. And I've been used to using my phone with Google Maps to kind of give a direction. And also, since I'm usually driving, and this errand especially, I put it on voice command. So it would tell you, go two miles ahead and make a left at the light, and et cetera. And probably some of you have used that function on your phones too. So I was going pretty well on places I knew and I made the last turn at the light and heading out past the county fairgrounds. And this is where I wasn't quite sure where this address was, so I paid more attention to the voice that was speaking to me from my phone. And it first said, your destination is about a quarter of a mile ahead. So at least it knows where it is and I'm heading in that direction. Next thing I heard, your destination is 400 yards in the front of you. Well, heading in the right direction. In a few minutes it said, you have arrived. I'm looking around and all I see <laughs> are trees on either side of the road, as far as I could see ahead of me before the turn. I, and I know I answered that voice saying, I don't think so. <laughs> So I kept going further, maybe I, you know, trying to slowly drive with no traffic behind me. Maybe I'm missing something through the trees. And now you hear the phone starting to recalibrate. We'll send you this way. It's over here. You've passed and things like that. And I turned it off. I, no, I don't need this. So I shortly turned down the first road to my right, thinking, well, maybe it's on a parallel road that I don't see from this main road. So I'm traveling down there, look, slowly looking from side to side, still heading in the same direction, but not going too fast. Don't see anything that looks like a maintenance building or buildings. But what I do see going uh, further down, there were some scattered homes, and it was a nice day, and there were people working in their front yard. So I slowly pulled up lowered my window and said, excuse me, I'm looking for the township municipal building, the new one. I, I, I seem to be lost. 
Oh, you're not too far from there. Just go down about a quarter of a mile, make a left at the light, uh, at the stop sign, go one block, make another left, and go down that road, 118, which I was on, and it will be on your right. You can't miss it. <laughs> and I said, well, you know, I think I did already. <laughs> Are you sure? He said, oh, it'll be obvious. It's a big open clearing of the trees, and you'll see the big garages there. So I trusted this human direction that I talked to and pulled out and was, it's that in between time that I knew I was lost and haven't gotten there yet and I was thinking, what am I gonna do with this carload of stuff? <laughs> I don't wanna go back home and unload all this stuff. And I was getting annoyed, angry, anxious. Why can't I find this place? What's making this so hard? I followed the human directions and sure enough, it was there on my right. I pulled in and I was just so relieved and there was a line of cars and I didn't care. <laughs> I was at the right place. I slowly followed the car loads into the shed and they unloaded everything, everything possible. And I just felt, whew, I got to the right place eventually and got all that stuff out of my car, out of our house, mission accomplished. Well, I think we've all had experiences with being lost when we travel, be it a short distance or a long distance. It's between the being lost and knowing where you are eventually are, the foundness, that in-between time is the worst. You know you're not where you're supposed to be, but you haven't gotten to where you need to be, or you want to be, or you know you should be. But sometimes that feeling isn't just a physical place, isn't just about traveling, but there are things in life, situations in life, that make us feel like we're lost in our world, lost in our life's journey. Things aren't like they are supposed to be. This is, isn't how I planned it. This isn't the path I expected to be on. Where am I? What am I supposed to do? How am I going to get through this to get to where I feel more comfortable? Familiar life. Things that are center me and ground me. Those new things can be a variety of things, something that we were planning for. I remember when my, my wife and I were planning to have our child, our, uh, uh, and I was getting anxious about becoming a father. And I was talking to a lot of people saying, well, what's the best book about being a father? Do you have a book? Is there a manual someplace I can kind of study up on that? And said, no, there's no manual. You kind of go with what you know, and ask for help along the way. I said, oh, okay. But even along the way, when right before I retired from uh, active ministry in the, in the Lutheran Church, they had a lot of pre-retirement seminars to help manage the way ahead in retirement. Things to think about. Things to avoid. We're always there to help you. I mean, those seminars and pre-meetings were helpful, but it's like, well, what about me? I mean, those things are good for the general population. I think everyone feels, but I'm still anxious about me not working anymore. And what's that going to be like for me, for my wife, for meaning, for purpose? A whole array of questions about what retirement is. Because I saw my father... Years ago, when he retired, after 27 years in the factory, and it did not go well. He was not a person that could use his time wisely or knew how to use his time. He wasn't prepared. If anything, he got on my mother's back and nerves for all those years. And she kept saying, boy, I wish he was still working and out of the house. <laughs> New things are presented in life. Some, like I said, some are planned, we're expecting, but other times we are not expecting. 
illness, divorce, loss of a loved one. How do we exist in this new state we find ourselves in? This new place that we weren't planning to be in, with new information that's impacting me. Certainly we all have felt that feeling at some point as we age. Kind of wake up some morning and say, you know, I don't feel like a 30-year-old anymore. I don't feel like I was when I was 29. And then it's like, well, I'm not. I may be 40 years older. I know I'm the same person. But I can't do what I normally would like to do. I need to adjust. Find my way again and how to be and do what I like to do at this place in my life. It's a difficult time that I feel we all are faced with in a sense of being lost from where we thought we were, would like to be, used to be, want to be. And sometimes unexpectedly we're faced with a place in our journey of life that seems and feels so unusual, like we were lost. Our lessons today remind us and it is the good news of the gospel that God continues to seek us out, especially when we are lost, especially when we feel that we're not where we're supposed to be, when we're distressed, lonely, overwhelmed, wishing we could be how we used to be, be with those whom we long to see again, but God has called us in baptism to be with our Lord and be together and promises to be with us. And that action of calling us through the waters of baptism doesn't stop from God's side. God continues to seek and search and find us wherever we are on our life's journey. And part of the remembrance of, of that good news of God's promise to us helps when we come together as God's people in worship. We hear the pro our prayers, scripture. We see images that remind us that we are not lost, but we soon, if we feel discomfort, we will soon be found because the cross is our point of reference. We are found in God's Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, so that we may have life. Yes, there are times when it's difficult and we struggle. We yearn for something else, yearn for something better, wish we could be someplace we know and knew. But God is with there constantly seeking us out and invites us There's a place for you at the Lord's table. There's a place for you. If you feel lost, there's a place for you right there at the Lord's table. All are welcome. Where the body and blood of Christ has been broken and shed for you. For you, God acted out of love and grace for you so that you will be found in God's embrace always. Even when we're disoriented and don't sense the loving arms of God. When night seems long and the days are short, God is there in the midst of that in-between time of being lost until we're found again. That's where the Lord meets us, to encourage us, to tell us, you are mine. I will not abandon you. I love you. 
You are my precious life. In our confession, when we began our worship today, we, pr we prayed that show us a path that leads to life. And in our prayer of the day, O oh God, you lead back to yourself all who go astray. God is the one who shepherds us toward him and goes out of God's way to find us wherever we are, physically or emotionally, to be with us, to say that I know and I love you and I am with you. That is the good news in our journey together. That we are not abandoned or alone. We all find ourselves lost and struggling. That's part of the human journey. But we are not kept there. We are not abandoned there. But God joins us, and seeks us out, because we are his. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may stand as we continue to sing in our Green Lutheran Book of Worship, hymn number 456, The King of Love, My Shepherd Is. <laughs>
with the whole church, let us profess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As scattered grains of wheat are gathered together into one bread, so let us gather our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of God's good creation. Your people receive mercy and your grace overflows in our lives. Fill your church with faith and love and give understanding hearts to those who work to strengthen our ecumenical and interreligious commitments. God of grace, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Your creation groans as it suffers the impacts of pollution and lack of care. As the seasons change, renew in us the will to protect plants, animals, and habitats. Bless us with bountiful harvests that all may share. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your world is shattered in the nation's rage. Remember us in your mercy. Teach wisdom to our elected leaders so that we know peace in our world, peace in our homes, and peace in our hearts. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your children wander homeless and the hungry cry for bread. Seek out those who are lost or lonely, anxious or depressed, or struggling with addiction or illness. Provide for those in any need. We pray especially for Robert, Maritza, George, Susan, Jason, Eric, Sabrina, Tracy, Drew, Barbara, Ned, Adam and family, Megan, Jim, Janine, Jean Marie, Tom and Valerie, Daniel, Marge, Jen, Lorraine, Rachel, Jeffrey, Maya and Matthew, Wilbur, John, Carol, Joe, Tony, and Roberta. And we pray for others we name aloud now or silently in our hearts. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your work is done in this congregation with our hands, feet, voices, minds, and hearts. Build up the ministries of this community that we serve our neighbors and welcome the stranger in your name. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your blessed saints who have died now rest in your presence. Give us thankful hearts for those who have been examples of faith in our lives and receive us with joy when we come to share eternal life with you. God of grace, hear our prayer. Gather together in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, gracious God. We offer these and all our prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share a sign of the Lord's peace with one another. May the peace of the Lord be found in our hearts, be found in our room, be found in our neighborhood, and be found in our world. You may be seated as we receive your offering.
us pray. Gracious God, in your great love you richly provide for our needs. Make of these gifts a banquet of blessing and make us ready to share with all in need. Through Jesus Christ, who sets a table for all. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give Him thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, merciful God, you are most holy, and great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for the, his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will, and to accomplish all things in our, for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you, and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin, do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes, remembering therefore his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace and receiving the forgiveness of sin, may be formed to live as your holy people and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor, glory, and glory in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ invites you to this table. Come, taste and see. You may be seated at this time. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. 
body of Christ and given for you. Amen. You may stand for a blessing. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of the abundant table, you have refreshed our hearts in this meal with bread for the journey. Give us your grace on the road that we might serve our neighbors with joy. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
gives life to all things and frees us from despair, bless you with truth and peace. And may the Holy Trinity, one God, guide you always in faith, hope, and love. Amen. Amen. Our sending hymn is hymn number 448 in our green Lutheran Book of Worship, Amazing Grace. Thank you. 